Good morning, everybody. I want to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Let me just do a quick introduction about myself. My name is Federico Pena, and I'm the president and founder of ITRY Solutions. I've been working in the ITSM space. So I started off in the software configuration management space around 20 years ago. Then I moved into service management. And I've been really focusing on project and portfolio management for the last approximately 15 years. Started off as a consultant, and most of the time, you know, what I wanted to do was to facilitate or make implementations of enterprise software easier and faster. So today, we're going to try and cover different reasons and ways to display your PG data inside of Excel and SharePoint. So I think we're we're ready to start. I'm going to start by doing a few housekeeping items while the last seats in the webinar get taken. First of all, we want to encourage all of you to ask questions throughout the webinar. To do this, there's a question box on the control panel located on the right-hand side of your screen. Please type the questions as soon as you have a webinar to answer these questions, Now, depending on the section that we're at. Remember, the more questions you ask, the more you're going to get out of this webinar and the more questions you're going to get answered. Right? Usually we'll leave about 20 minutes or so at the end of the webinar to answer any remaining questions that may be. And also, there is a panel by the questions where you, it's called handouts, and you'll be able to download the PowerPoint presentation. And normally I like to make the demos interactive, so I encourage all of you to write topics of what you would like to see. And I'm going to provide an example. You know, when people think of Excel, and SharePoint for reporting, their minds really start spinning out of control with all the different options. Well, these are the options that I'd like to hear about, and this is what I'm going to be able to tailor the integration around. Right? You know, is it possible to do this? Can we mix Excel inside of SharePoint? Um, you know, these are the types of questions that I would like for you guys to ask. So basically, let's get started by talking about your current business needs. So you're all joining this webinar because you have some type of reporting pain. And you know, maybe we can just show you tips and tricks on how to resolve that using common tools such as Excel and SharePoint that you probably already have in-house. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you are going to CA World this year, um, but we are going to be there. I'm going to be at CA World uh, between the 13th and the 17th. I would love to see you guys. Um, you know, I would like to take a minute or two to personally invite all of you to come and visit our booth in 403P. Um, usually this is the only place I get to meet most of the people that I do webinars for. Um, and I'm always interested in putting a face to the name. So if you're one of those people that never misses one of our webinars or one of my webinars, um, or we see each other in Vegas every year, well, I welcome the opportunity to see you guys again. And remember, um, I'm always open to you know doing personalized questions, demos, you know technical questions that you may have you know, that we can assist with. So the webinar topics, um, you know, first thing we're going to talk about is um, about us, right? Uh, what ITROI Solutions does, what we've been focusing on. Then we're going to talk about the common problems that uh, people have around data and reporting, right? And common data challenges, right? And we're going to talk about solutions that, you know, basically you already have, you already own, right? And how you can leverage those current tools to facilitate some of your reporting. It doesn't mean that it's going to uh, be a complete um, reporting solution, but it's going to help you resolve several of your current pain points. And then we're going to do a couple of different demos. We're going to do a demo in Excel and a demo in SharePoint to really show you and let you visualize different options and different data points. And then last but not least, we're going to do a question and answer period about us. So we're an upstart enterprise integration and consulting firm. We started off in 2009. Our mission was to deliver consulting services. But as the years went, our, our focus changed from providing services to figuring out how we could minimize services for clients by trying to automate implementation processes as well as reporting processes. Right? So we noticed that one of the biggest costs that organizations were encountering were the cost of integrations. Right? So we started our software organization by building what we call the IB, which is the integration function. 
And this was a tool that was designed to automate the building of integrations, basically by automating the business rules of an ETL. Um, you know, and of course, um, with end users, you know, we always got complaints that they wanted a solution that allowed them to manage their own data. And of course, because the ID was very technical, we needed to provide solutions for end users, right, so they could have their own mini integrations. This is why we started getting into Excel and SharePoint, really to cater to the end user's needs. Um, you know, and why Excel? Because, you know, everyone likes Excel. I don't think there's anyone in an organization that says, um, oh, no, I don't like Excel. I don't know how to use it. Um, you know, and the same thing occurs with SharePoint. SharePoint has a very big footprint, right? And what that, ha what that basically makes people um, become very familiar with it. It doesn't matter what organization they're at. They move from one organization to another. They're always going to have a SharePoint background because Microsoft did a really good job in rolling it out throughout the enterprise. So reporting. Um, we focused our organization around making it easier to work with enterprise tool sets by taking advantage of the Microsoft platform I just mentioned. Now we use Microsoft because of the familiarity that people have around using Office tool sets. But the question always comes up whenever we do demos of our tools, um, which is, can we report our data in Excel or SharePoint, right? Our tools were initially designed for bi-directional operation. We were always concerned with providing the ability for end users to effectively maintain the data um, that we really forgot about management and C-level executives that needed to make decisions based on this data that gets updated. Most, and now you ask, you know, why um, we forgot about management, and really it's because most CEOs don't necessarily rely on their data. Or they do to a certain extent, but most surveys show that um, they're confident that their data is not 100% accurate. As a matter of fact, the industry standard's around 65%. Um, so let me ask you guys, uh, how many, for example, how many of you massage, or as some of you like to call, um, doctor, your reports before presenting them to your management? Or how many export reports to PowerPoint because you don't trust the data in your system? Or better yet, you export it in PowerPoint, you doctor it so it sounds better when you're at the management meeting. Usually this is done because the C-level executives don't have access to the enterprise tool sets. Or if they do, they don't necessarily know how to navigate through all of them, right? Because they have to uh, you might have 10 or 15 different enterprise tool sets that they might have to learn, they're not really interested, or they don't have the time to take all of these reports and conglomerate them into one um, so they can have a holistic view. So these, this means that organizations are not making accurate decisions because the data that they have is not accurate. Right? Poor data reports uh, poor data reporting leads to incorrect information in the hands of decision makers. So the reason for this is that you have two types of decision makers, or really two sides of the spectrum. Those that blindly trust their data within their organization, and we can probably count those in one hand, right? Um, and those that do not fail to scrutinize it to a point where there's no trust in the source, right? So this makes the job of properly interpreting statistics very difficult, especially if the source is not necessarily the system of truth, but some doctored report generated by one or more of their subordinates. Right? And this causes the majority of the decisions to be made by executives based really on a gut feeling or experience instead of true data analytics. Of course, that's not the case with all organizations. But I'm sure in your particular organization, you can think of at least one thing that could be improved when it comes to data accuracy and reporting. So this is where people say, you know, um, let us use, let's use Tableau, let's use JasperSoft, Microsoft BI, or, you know, whatever, and all these sorts of other types of reporting tools. But really, making decisions is resolved by process, not by tools. There's always a misconception of how things are presented, specifically by salespeople. It's like when people say CAPPM helps you manage your products. Well, technically, that's not true, right? Project managers help you manage projects. CAPPM is one of the tools used by project managers. 
But the same thing applies to reporting tools. Although this issue of uh, building static reports is becoming a thing of the past as tools are becoming more dynamic and more end user friendly, historically that's been the main issue around reporting. You have to pay some developers a bunch of money to create reports that then have to be exported to some office tool so they can be massaged or doctored, right? Now part of the demo that I'm going to be doing today is going to be around how you can use something like Excel to give you the information that you need to be able to execute your job more accurately. So generally, different reporting tools can provide um, different levels of frustration. Um, as well, because of the complexity of the data model, you might feel like this guy in, with the fishing rod, you know, although very eager and enthusiastic about getting home with some type of catch, the probability of actually getting is pretty unlikely, right? This is the most common problem around business reporting in today's age. Basically, the reporting is just another tool that someone on your team has to learn and master to get something that needs to be massaged later for an accurate decision to be made because you can't trust the data that you're actually presenting initially. So this brings me to, you know, the four big V's, right? Um, volume is one, right? So the scale of data, right? Um, it's much different analyzing one record, ten records, a hundred records than one million, million, a hundred million, right? Um, and the variety, the different forms of data. So how does the data get to you, right? Especially now, you know, that we're starting to get into the big data component, right? Now structured data sets are no longer really the norm, right? Velocity, which is the speed in which data is streaming, right? How fast is that data changing? How static is it, right? And last but not least is the veracity, right? How uncertainty of the data, right? You have to ensure that your data is actually accurate. Things that we want to think about, right? How many decisions do you make for your organization without the right information on a weekly basis? What are the consequences of those decisions? And what kind of reports do you need to get the right people at the right time? And last but not least is how do you present that data to those people? So I want to spend a couple of minutes discussing obvious solutions that are usually not thought about as enterprise reporting solutions, right? Probably the main reason that SharePoint and Excel are not thought of as enterprise reporting solutions is because one, that's not what they were designed for, and two, people think of these tools more as a data tracking, data entry tools, more than a consumption layer, right? So you think of Excel, you think of, you know, some Excel tables where you enter and update data, right? You don't really, most people don't think of Excel as a way to consume data, right? Um, and I would generally agree with them, except there's one key factor that you know nobody's taken into account, right? Which is the flexibility, but most importantly, the familiarity that people have with these tools, right? Whenever you have specific tool sets that are easy to use, right, it makes them more user friendly. Therefore, more people are tended or trend to use those tools, right? So when people think of SharePoint, they think of documents, blogs collaboration, but rarely do they think of exposing third-party data inside of SharePoint. Of course, there's organizations with elaborate SharePoint implementations where they use, you know, business connectivity services to bring data from different sources into SharePoint. But generally, that requires a skill set that's not always common. So part of today's demo, I'm going to show some examples of how to easily map CAPPM data into SharePoint. And I bring this other screen up um, because um, what I'm going to show today isn't something that you necessarily just can do for CAPM. It can be done with SAP, JIRA, ServiceNow, Workday. You know, sky's the limit on enterprise tool sets that you can bring into SharePoint. Really, what I want to show is the concept of what can be done, right? Um, so. One of the key pieces of this approach is bringing data from different tool sets into one screen generally also eliminates a large need to integrate data. Um, I'm just going to spend a second on providing a couple of common examples that people use this for. For example, a lot of organizations have SAP and CAPPM 
or the integrate project financials or PO data. But really, what they're trying to accomplish is, in one screen, visualize their CAPPM project financials and match them to, to their SAP project financials. But there's no real need to duplicate the data in both systems, as opposed to just visualizing the data in one screen from both systems. So that's, that's where this type of solution really works well, right? It isn't um, design really where you need to kick off specific business processes from other enterprise tool sets. It's really designed right, to be able to visualize data from multiple systems in one screen. And the other solution I wanted to discuss was the ability to be able to display data in Excel. Right? Currently, you know, and I would say that probably a large percentage of you do this um, by going to some portlet then exporting it to Excel, right, and then building a couple of pivots to show the data that they need. Um, but the reason this isn't very popular is because it's very time consuming. So there's multiple steps involved in creating a chart. Um, now when I get into the demo, I'm going to show how you can actually accomplish this by clicking the button, right? Once we figure out what the data source is in CAPPM, right, as opposed to exporting it from CAPPM to a new Excel sheet, what we're doing is we're importing it from Excel into a sheet. And the reason we want to do that in, that in those steps is because you can maintain your logic. So all you're doing really is when you click get, is you're really just refreshing the data with inside of your Excel sheet. Now, you know, when you think of Excel reporting, right, um, don't just think of reporting on the contents of the data, right? So we have a lot of clients where um, one of the biggest things that we build is reports on the data itself, meaning the metadata, right? Now, you're probably asking what I mean by this, but, you know, let me explain the specific scenario. So in this specific report, right, we're showing a report accuracy, right? How complete it is, the unique, how consistent, and how stale it is, right? So that's important for some organizations to visualize based on an object or multiple objects or a conglomerate of objects on how accurate your data is, right? So this is multiple uses, of course, um, measuring the data accuracy programmatically can't be, can't be done on something like human error, right? Um, but this at least helps you understand how people are interacting with inside of your data. Now, with inside of Excel, right, like I said, we can validate, we can check, you know, duplicated data, incomplete data, um, how timeliness it is, right, or if it's valid or not. So things that we want to think about is, you know, um, how much time do you spend accessing information or documentation just so you can make decisions? And do you have the right information? Right? And is it real time in a single view? Right? Those are the things I want um, everyone to spend a couple of minutes thinking about while I get started. So I'm going to get started on the demo. Okay? So let me just get out of here. Close this window and open up. So I'm going to start off the demo by um, utilizing Excel. So I'm going to start off the demo using Excel. Um, and I'm going to just provide a couple of different simple examples that you can use in Excel to do and to get a lot of value out of your data and to help people make decisions in flight as they enter the data for their job. Okay? So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do something simple like allocations. Right? So I'm going to extract some allocation data. I'm going to select I want a specific project that I want to get and I'm going to say get this data. All right. So the main reason I want to do this inside of Excel is because with inside of my organization, I have um, a type of planning where um, I, can, I can plan based on a budget. So for specific months, they tell me how much money I have to spend every month on labor, right? So let's say in this case we have, I don't know, we can spend $250,000 a month on, on labor, all right? Well, because 
I've extracted the allocation data from within side of CAPPM, right? Within inside of CAPPM, I have a rate matrix for this particular user or for every user, right? And I know the month, which that means I know the number of hours. So in Excel, what we did is, in this case, is what we built the virtual cost plan. All right? So this virtual cost plan does what? It takes the number of hours in the month, multiplies it by this person's hourly wage, and then puts an amount down here. So let's say I wanted to figure out that I wanted to maintain my cost to $250,000 a month. In this case here, I'm at $350,000 on average right, per month. So what I can do is I can say, well, if I was to take this and turn this into 0.8, I'm going to actually make it 0.7, and change this month to 0.7, right, I can see that I'm getting pretty close to that number. right? So it it's um, it's allowing me to make decisions on how I can allocate my people based on how much it's going to cost. Right? And all I'm really deep doing is I extract some data in Excel and I build a little component that basically multiplies one value right, by another value to give me my end goal result, right? which is I need the plan based on dollars, not based on people. So this I can now drag and drop. I can check and see what my cost plan is going to be for all of these months. Let me just add these two here. Right? And this gives me a good ability to be able to manage my data with inside of Excel. So that's a perfect example right, of where this comes in very handy. Now another perfect example where this comes in handy is, let's say um, I wanted to do allocations for all of my resources, right? Um, but I really want to know, um, you know, I want to do my allocations, and but I want to find out how busy this guy is. Well, now I can actually, so all I need to do is I need to hyperlink, right? So all I'm doing is I'm going to do another data extract, except I'm going to pass this resource ID as a parameter to my allocation pool. So now, Right? I do another data pull, right? another allocation pull, and it gets me all of the allocations for this particular user. Of course, in this case, I only have this user assigned to one project. But if it was assigned to multiple projects, it would show me that data within side of Excel. So like I said, and I can utilize the cost plan as well to be able to manage the cost plan or the virtual cost plan for that new data. So you can see the value in building new sheets dynamically and providing that data with inside of Excel. Right? So that's a perfect example on how to do this um, or how to leverage Excel. But let's say we had um, a need to build a report um, for project data. Right? Um, so we need to extract the project data and then build some um, pivots around that project data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come and say I want to get my data and I'm going to grab my project data. And I'm going to say I don't want to do any filtering and I say yeah. So all of what this Excel does is it utilizes um, the Clarity API, the Query API to extract the data, right? So think if you have a portlet inside of CAPPM, it now becomes available for you to extract via the API layer, right? Um, so now that we can configure the Excel to bring that data out, right? I can come here and I can say, well, um, I pulled out my project data, and the other thing I did is instead of manually building my dashboard every time, right? Whenever I do the extract, right? This is where I said it's it's much better to use one Excel sheet, and from that one Excel sheet, when you pull the data out then you just have it implement your logic dynamically, right? As opposed to if you went to the portlet and you export that data, it's going to come to a new Excel sheet and therefore you have to manipulate that new Excel sheet, right? In this case, I'm just going to go and I click on the dashboard and now shows me all of the data for these particular projects. So this is my project dashboard, right? Now I initially, it didn't ask me, it asked me if I wanted to filter by anything. Now in this case, I said, no, I don't want to filter my data by anything because I can slice and dice my data directly inside of Excel. 
So I can come here and I can literally use any of the data slicers directly inside of Excel to be able to show the different criteria for my project data, right? So this is another perfect example where we extract and it dynamically builds data reports. So what can you do? You just need to take this Excel, you send it to your boss, you go, oh, you want to see project data? Literally, you go, you get click, and you select projects, and it's going to display the data, right? And this could be applied to any object with inside of the CAPPM ecosystem, right? So I'm going to, well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a couple of seconds um, showing you different types of um, reporting possibilities with inside of SharePoint. Um, what I would like to do is I'd like to um, see if anyone has any questions regarding um, how this reporting module works or how the options are, what different options we have to extract that data. Okay? So I'm going to minimize this Excel sheet and I'm going to open up SharePoint. I'm going to actually open up a project here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on So I've just clicked on this particular project inside of CAPPM, okay? And from here, I have a, a link that basically um, has links me to a SharePoint site of this project, all right? So now I'm going to talk about different concepts. So in, within inside of here, right, we have some, some basic um, reporting as far as grids and graphs, right? But what I want to show you is all sorts of different types of options that you can do with inside of SharePoint. So for example, in this case, we had, um, we had a client say, well, I would like to see a, a report that looks similar to the new CAPPM UI inside of SharePoint. Right? Now, because with inside of SharePoint, you have the ability to put CSS is, you can mix it with HTML, right? Sky's the limit, right? You can put JavaScript and you can turn this and make this look any way you want, right? So these are some types of components where, right, you can say, well, for a specific status report, you can see your overall, your schedule, right, your effort, right? Or you can see, you know, what you can build, dynamically build a calendar, see what tasks are coming up. But where I really want to focus a little bit of time on is um, on the initial page that I showed, which is how to integrate or how to display multiple different tool sets in one screen, right? Um, so with inside of the screen, I'm going to go to the to the reports link, right? And with inside of here, right, we have a mixture of data that comes from within inside of CAPPM. And part of it comes from ServiceNow, right? Why? Because from as an ITSM, for example, a service manager, I might be interested in not only my team utilization, but I'm also interested in seeing how my SLAs are doing, right, by stage, right? So these are different components. And all we are doing is, in this case, is we are leveraging the same query API. So we're utilizing the API to extract the data from within inside of CAPPM to display it inside of SharePoint. Okay. Now, another example that a lot of people like to use is they like to embed the Excel services directly inside of SharePoint. Okay. So utilizing the same technology or the same API, right? We can now, in this case, what we're doing is we're extracting and displaying the process engine, right? So document approvals around a specific set of project managers and a specific set of projects with inside of CAPPM. All right. So I have a couple of questions. Um, one of the questions here is, are these tools on-demand compliant? Um, now, as I mentioned before, because we go through the API layer, everything that we've done is 
on-demand compliance. So really, there's no installation required on the on-demand services. It's basically web service calls to extract the data from CAPPM. Um, now, I have another question here that says, where does the rate, the, the rate data reside in the Excel file? Um, well, that actually is within side of a hidden column on, on a monthly basis. So when we do the extract for the allocations, we extract the rate for those months as well. So they're just on hidden columns within side of the Excel. All right, so I just covered the couple of live demos. Now, like I said, um, a couple of things I want to cover, right, is, um, you know, what's what's the real cost of reporting, right? You know, this, the solutions that we just proposed in this scenario, right, is to try and let you utilize existing technologies that your organization already has with existing technology that CAPPM already has. So really, what we want to do is let you utilize the tools that you're currently using to be able to take full advantage of the data that's within inside of your system. Mainly, you want to think about, you know, what's the cost of the information and what's the cost of poor data quality, right? If you have reporting that's made easy and accessible to end users, it's pretty straightforward to get this at least dramatically reduced with inside of your organization. All right, um, I want to thank everyone. I'm going to open up the, the floor for questions and answers. You know, first of all, I'm going to let everyone know that we are recording this and we'll be sending the link to the replay video within 24 hours. Don't forget, you know, if you're going to be in CA World, uh, feel free to come and meet us this year. We're at booth 403. Now, I got a couple of other questions here. It says, is there any restrictions or exemptions to get data into Excel from CAPPM? No, the only, I guess the only restriction would be that the data has to be within inside of the database or has to be accessible within inside of the database. But uh, you know, generally, most of the data within inside of CAPPM is there is some specific configuration data that isn't available. Um, but as long as it's in the database and you can query it, so think of it this way. If you can write an end SQL, you can extract it. Is there documentation on how to get this set up within our on-demand PPM system? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, what we can do is feel free to reach out to me at my email or reach out to sales. Um, we'll gladly get you set up with some documentation on how you can help at least understand how this works and what the level of effort to get this implemented on demand would be. Here, there is a question here that says, what is the exact difference with the SharePoint integration delivered by CA? Well, that, that, that's a completely different topic altogether. But mainly, well, not mainly, there's, there's quite a few differences. Generally, um, the integration that CA provides really is it updates what are called SharePoint lists. What that means is you really taking your CAPPM data and you're putting it inside of SharePoint, right? But that, that data is not live. Think of it as, um, as some type of data warehouse, right? Um, you have to refresh the data within inside of your SharePoint list for it to be updated, as opposed to the, um, the solution that I've just proposed is whenever you refresh your SharePoint page, it goes to CAPPM and does a data extract to display the page. So this is more for, let's say, reports that are real time. Now, I got another question here that says, any dependencies on PPM versions? Not at the moment. Um, as, long as, as long as the CAPPM has an API available, which, you know, it still supports the query API, which is what I recommend as the easiest solution to be able to extract your data, then no. As far as on-premise installation considerations, um, I guess the only question I would have for that would be if, if you're thinking about being on-premise with your SharePoint on 365, um, there are some little caveats that you need to make sure that you take into account. But other than that, um, the on-premise installation is the one that has the least amount of issues. Then I have another question here that says, how about security access management? 
I'm going to come back to the Excel here for a second. And there's a little piece that I didn't actually cover through here. So initially, um, so this is our Excel interface. And the Excel is just an Excel file co that contains a custom ribbon, right? And with inside of this custom ribbon, it has your Clarity login information, all right? So as far as the security is concerned, right, it would utilize these credentials. So you need to have credentials into your CAPPM environment to be able to access that data, right? And because you're going through the API layer, then the same security parameters can be passed to your NSQL queries, the same as you can with portlets and reports with inside of CAPPM. Um, so what are the extra advantages of SharePoint? To massage, get charts of data, as we now have JasperSoft integrated with Clarity. It really depends. I mean, um, you know, one of the main points that I was trying to discuss at the start of this call is one of the main advantages of SharePoint is really familiarity, right? If if you go and do a survey with inside of your organization and you go, um, how many of you know what SharePoint is and how many of you know what JasperSoft is, the, the difference in the answer is going to be dramatically different. Really, that, that just boils down to a lower lower training, easier training for your end users, and at the end of the day, it's going to be a lower total cost of ownership for your tool set. There's another, any dependencies for the Microsoft Excel and SharePoint versions? I recommend that you stay within inside of the Microsoft supported version platform. So that basically means 2013 and greater for SharePoint and for Excel. You know, obviously SharePoint online, Excel online, um, Excel services with inside of SharePoint, all of that is possible as well. And there's another question here, updates back from Excel. So it said, the question is, uh, how do you update the PPM based on the decisions that were made? So I'm going to come back and let me just uh, do my allocation data get again here. And I'm going to say I want to get data for this project. And the reason I always pick the same project is because I have a limited um, sample data with inside of my environment. So uh, with inside of the Excel, you notice that we have a couple of different options. We have a get, right? And you can get data from Clarity or a template. And once we manipulate the data, notice that obviously the, the cells change color. That means that Excel knows that there's been modifications to the data. Now I can literally just click load and that pushes that data back. Right. Um, I didn't cover that with inside of the um, of the webinar because um, really the main purpose of this webinar was more to to show how we can use this to extract and display data. Um, but yes, absolutely, the Excel is completely completely bi-directional. And um, let me even give you another example. Right. It not only does um, it does full data validation in flight. So you, you, know, you can validate the type of data that you have with inside of your system. So for example here, I want to change my project manager. It automatically pulls me the data, right, a lookup for all of the available fields that are, that are possible. And let's say, you know, let's say I do a, I manipulate a value right, that's invalid, right, when I go to validate that, it basically tells me that that's an incorrect value, right. So, so yes, you can absolutely update your data directly from within side of the Excel. Uh, you're asking now if the update is not in real time. Well, once you click load, it loads it back directly into CAPPM. So you need to actually push it back to CAPPM. But if you like, you know, I can I can definitely provide additional information on how that Excel piece works, and I can definitely help with any additional information that you may need. I have one here that's asked, and how is this licensed? Um, so we have multiple different licensing models for these products. It can either be purchased or a subscription model, um, and we either base it on number of CAPPM licenses, or you can get an enterprise license. Um, so 
so it covers globally. You can either have have it for just CAPPM or you can have the tools you know for CAPPM and ServiceNow and SAP and really depends on your needs uh, what your requirements are. But um, you know I can definitely reach out to you directly and uh, you know answer a few more of those questions if you need. So I have another question here regarding what are the costs associated with the different licensing types. Um, all right, I'm gonna. I'll give you a ballpark idea. Well, the thing is, you know, what we covered here. You know, what I covered was really data extracts and displaying data within inside of different tool sets, right? Um, our our standard licensing, as I covered at the very start of the webinar, our initial thought for these tools was to make you know both Excel and SharePoint completely bi-directional. So the, the pricing that I'm going to provide for you is going to be um, the bi-directional. So you can accomplish both things. You can extract and do these little dashboards and these virtual cost plans in flight, or you can take that data and make it completely bi-directional into CAPPM. On our website, we have a couple of um, possibility uh, for pricing regard around um, subscription models, right? So you can find the subscription model pricing for the Excel and for the SharePoint, but you know, there's um, obviously there's a, a million different ways to skin that cat. So like I said, if you like, I can reach out to you directly and uh, I have no issues going over all of the licensing options that we have. All right, well, I wanna thank everybody for attending this webinar. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly or reach out to anyone on our team. Um, I'll definitely reach out to the people that had some uh, specific questions. I want to have more in-depth questions regarding what the different possibilities are for this. And I'm going to take this time and basically give you back the last uh, 12 minutes of this hour. And thanks again for every to everybody. I appreciate it.